Welcome to Oshkosh's EAA. Enjoy the videos and subscribe. Good morning. We're here at AirVenture 2023 and uh, I'm going to be giving you a brief overview of two new features that we rolled out last week for the Cirrus SF50 Vision Jet. Uh, my name is Jonathan Sweetman. I'm a regional sales director for Cirrus Aircraft and I have the privilege of being tight on the Vision Jet. I also fly the SR Series Pistons a great deal. So radar, onboard radar on aircraft has traditionally been a little bit of science and a little bit of art. There's a lot of adjustments that can be made, whether it be the tilt or the gain, how to get the best imagery out of the radar system, and then just as importantly, how to interpret that imagery for the best safety for weather avoidance. Well, working closely with Garmin last week, we launched Auto Radar, and our good friends at Garmin have now given us the ability to automate much of that adjustment. You can still make the adjustments manually, but by selecting the auto mode on the radar now, it's going to do all of the appropriate adjustments to the gain and the tilt and the various other parameters that can be adjusted to give you the very best image of the weather in order to give you the best decision making for threat avoidance when it comes to that. So it goes from a very high workload um, feature that is common in many aircraft that you do have to work closely with it to something that's now automated which ought to bring more convenience and ultimately more safety into the cockpit. The second feature that we rolled out this week is a add-on to Cirrus IQ. Cirrus IQ has been on the SR series piston aircraft for a number of years now and it's essentially a transmitter that as soon as the aircraft lands it sends a bunch of pertinent data about the aircraft status to the cloud and from there the user can access that information on an app on their iPhone. Information such as where did the aircraft just land, what's the fuel status when it landed, battery status, oil temperature, uh, TKS fluid, hours, hobs and flight hours are all noted in that system and then available for you to view on an app when you're away from the aircraft. You can also do what's called a, P a PDR, pilot data request, where if you wish to see what the status of the aircraft is later on, you can check in with the aircraft and the app will send a signal to the transceiver on the aircraft which will then check the parameters and send you that information back. So let's say you were stopping overnight somewhere, you asked the FBO to fuel you up before you left the next morning, you were leaving early the next morning and uh, you wanted to make sure it was fueled, you can pull up the app, ask for a PDR, a pilot data request, and it will then update your fuel status and you'll know whether you've been fueled up or not. Now this is just the beginning of a much broader program that we're going to be rolling out over the next years, but this is the platform on which we're going to build a way for the aircraft to communicate with the owner and operator and also with us as the manufacturer for system health and for maintenance requirements and maintenance reminders and warranty scheduling and all sorts of useful owner information that this system will be able to give us. So this is just the beginning. It's very exciting as now we're able to access this data and uh, it's an extremely convenient and helpful feature that will also give us as a manufacturer a better idea of the overall fleet status so we can be monitoring maintenance trends across the whole fleet. Good morning, we're here at AirVenture 2023 at Oshkosh, Wisconsin, Saturday morning, getting towards the end of the week and we're going to be taking a closer look at the Cirrus SF50 Vision Jet. This particular one is actually a mock-up, we use this for exhibit purposes, it's built on the frame of a real aircraft but it's not actually a flyable aircraft so you may see a few things that look a little bit strange like the black skirt underneath here that's for mobility but it is built in the same molds and it uh, is the structure is the same as a real flying aircraft the wing itself is a relatively simple wing as turbine aircraft go it's a straight wing design that means it has very good low speed characteristics because we particularly wanted the aircraft to have the feel and the speeds in the approach and landing as similar as possible to our piston aircraft. 
Another thing about the wing is the overall wing span. It is under 40 feet and as such will fit into most regular tea hangers. So that as a customer is stepping up from our piston product into our turbine product, they can usually use the same hanger as they were in with their piston aircraft. The aircraft is referred to a, a, as a composite structure. It's all carbon fiber. It's a carbon fiber structure and carbon fiber uh, skin on the aircraft. However, the control surfaces, the aileron and the flaps are metal, they're aluminum. And uh, the flaps here have an extremely high extension speed, which means you can start to put the flaps out when you're coming in fast to keep in step with the other turbine aircraft going into a busy airport but you can very quickly slow the aeroplane down to make the approach speeds very manageable, very easy to handle. The power plant, we're now on to what we call Generation 2 Plus. That means the latest version of the software in the fully automatic digital engine control, the FADEC engine. The latest version of the software gives us improved hot and high performance, a little bit more thrust when we need to get up and away at high altitudes or high temperatures on a given day. It's a V-tail design because being a single engine aircraft, we have to consider where the air engine is placed from a center line standpoint and also up high enough to keep it out of FOD and being the risk of sucking in uh, stones or anything like that on the ground. And so when we decided to put the engine on the spine of the aircraft, that drove the design decision for it to be a V-tail. You'll also notice that the engine itself is angled down a little bit to follow the contour of the fuselage but at the very end it has a little bit of a twist in the tail and this is thrust vectored not thrust vectoring it's not an f-22 um, but the thrust is bent just a wee bit so that as it comes out of the engine it is parallel to the flying deck angle of the aircraft and stays away from the structure here Two large rudder vators, as these are known, these give us both uh, pitch and yaw control out of the controllable service on the back end. What you see on the leading edge here is a Teflon-based boot system. It's part of the de-ice system of the aircraft. We also use heat on the probes of the aircraft. We use TKS fluid on the windshield and the engine nacelle uses bleed air from the engine for ice protection. These are called SAS or stability augmentation systems. With a relatively short aircraft like this the designers need to make sure we work out anything that may cause Dutch yaw, excuse me, Dutch roll and yawing effect. So these are constantly in effect to make sure that we have a smooth ride for all the occupants and they come on immediately at takeoff and go off at landing and this adds to the stability of the aircraft compartment here that's locked on this particular one we can take up to 300 pounds of bag actually it's not locked it's open how about that you see we store some materials in there up to 300 pounds this is outside the pressure vessel and so this is for golf clubs luggage and so on uh, we do have a little sign here saying no live animals we hope our operators are paying enough attention to that okay there we are external power if you either need to add external power i'm going to leave that open actually um, is here well away from well away from the other systems on the aircraft very easy for the ground crew to use and you can plug up an external gpu a ground power unit to run the air conditioning in advance if you want to cool the cockpit down before you go fly perhaps the most striking thing about the aircraft is the ease of access and when we say ease of access we mean that in multiple ways physically easy to get in through the door that's part of what we mean by that but we also mean ease of access from a pilot and an ownership standpoint it is a tight rating that's required by the FAA because it's a turbojet aircraft but the tight rating being single engine is one of the simpler tight ratings that you can get it would be well practiced and a good IFR pilot before you start but nonetheless it's very achievable for folks that are stepping up from our piston aircraft. The shape of the aircraft itself is very much mimicking that of an egg 
and the strength of the fuselage and the pressure vessel is derived from an egg shape. That is a single piece of carbon fiber that is made in a mold and then we take the mold apart around it after it's been made and then we attach the tail and the nose to it. Of course, as with all Cirrus aircraft, it is equipped with a ballistic recovery system, a parachute. The parachute in this aircraft is about a 90 foot diameter. It's almost three times the size of the parachute in our piston aircraft, deployed from the same big red T handle up above the uh, shoulders of the pilot and the co-pilot, accessible to the back seat occupants as well if they needed it. And that will lower the aircraft safely to the ground in the event of there being a problem with the aircraft. We recently also added Safe Return, which is a system that will help if, heaven forbid, there were an issue with the pilot. And the Safe Return is uh, a large red button, again, centrally located for all occupants to be able to access it. And if you were to push that button, the aircraft becomes an autonomous vehicle and will automatically find the nearest suitable airport based on weather, runway length, um, range, terrain, and various other factors that it takes into consideration. And it will then land the aircraft itself. It will communicate with air traffic control. It will operate the flaps and the gear and the throttle and will land the aircraft safely even if the pilot were incapacitated. And one of the key features of this aircraft is that it is designed to be an inclusive experience. Many business aircraft and turbine aircraft separate the pilot from the passengers. But because this aircraft is aimed at the owner flown market, it's very common that the person sitting in the front left seat, the pilot, is also the owner. And the folks riding in the back may be his or her family or guests or business partners. And we want that to be an inclusive experience. Enormous amount of space here when you first get into the back. It will take five seats for adults plus an additional two seats for children. Those are weight limited seats that go in the back. All the seats come out very quickly, no tools required, so you can easily reconfigure it to carry a lot of baggage if that's your preference. And the aircraft will fly for about 1200 miles on full tanks, but generally speaking, we recommend that our customers are using this to take 800 pounds, about 800 miles. If you want to go further, then you're going to take a little, less, a little bit less weight. If you want to take more people, it won't go quite as far. Just as with any aircraft, you play that weight versus range calculation on any given trip. The avionics on this aircraft are provided by Garmin. They are the Cirrus version of the G3000. We modify the avionics a little bit specifically for the installation in the Vision Jet. We use three of the landscape or horizontally oriented touch controllers and two of the widescreen displays. To the left, the primary flight display and on the right, the multifunction display. The autopilot is down below the touch controllers and then below that is the throttle and the flaps. Everything laid out very, very, very similarly to our piston aircraft, including, of course, the side yoke. And so cockpit commonality and transition from the piston aircraft to our turbine aircraft is made as simple as it can possibly be. On the overhead panel, as you look up, you will see controls for things like the fire extinguishers, the emergency quick don oxygen, and of course, the famous red parachute T-handle. And working back from that, you will see the large red safe return button, which is conveniently located in the center of the roof of the cockpit so that all occupants can access it. And if you come back just a little bit further still, the back seat folks have access to a 22 inch fold down screen. You could be running a movie on this. You could be working on your presentation if you're going on a business trip, but uh, that's an enormously popular feature there. The rear seaters have their own separate HVAC controls, so the uh, pilot and co-pilot have those enormous windows and they can control their own environmental uh, temperature up front, separate for the passengers in back. You can see there's an enormous amount of legroom for the passengers in back here. This seat is slid back to allow people in. Commonly it would be much further forward and we've got a huge amount of space here and huge windows with incredible visibility for the passengers.